Predators who have worked at Chuck E. Cheese. Any horror stories? Worked there 20 years ago as a game technician. I'd get pulled out of my repair room to help understaffed areas, which I really didn't mind that much. They asked me to be the rat one time. I'm 6'7", so everything that was supposed to be baggy was comfortable like that episode of The Simpsons where Homer goes to clown college. So I walk out there over 7 feet tall with the head on and wearing my own shoes since the suit ones are too small. Children start crying and running away. The poor kid who was there for his birthday crapped himself. So they immediately pull me into the back room and get a guy from the kitchen to take over. They asked me to never do it again. My second favorite story was the time the girl I was helping into the suit vomited in the head. So I take it from her and start carrying it outside to hose it off. Once again, the kids start crying. I guess I should have been aware that bringing the severed head of Chuck E. Cheese across the floor could cause some panic in our young customers. Then there was the time some father came in with every intention of kicking my butt, because I gave his daughter nightmares. I remembered the girl was like four years old and stopped me to say that her token was eaten by a game. So I explained to the dad and the GM that I opened it up and the mechanism was clean. So I flicked her a credit and closed up. Then she said, Ha ha, I tricked you. And I explained to her that lying isn't right and what she did was basically stealing. I told her to enjoy the free game and to think first before doing something like that again. I got the dad to bring her in so I could explain she wasn't in trouble and no one was mad just to try to use better judgment next time. The dad went from angry to embarrassed and I felt guilty for giving a little kid nightmares. Oh no, I have nightmares because I did something wrong. Honestly, sounds like their problem. I know they're four, I'm just kidding. I would also like to say that I'm a big fan of the image of a giant Chuck E. Cheese making kids crap themselves. Out of fear, I mean not any other possible way. I just think it's funny that they were so scared, that's all. Story 2. Working as a night watch officer, I had an experience where these sounds were coming from the arcade area, and I was sure someone was breaking in. The life-sized robotic Chuck E. Cheese was moving around on the floor staring at the security camera. Three days later, I quit the job and have never gone near one of those hell holes again. Even if there is a huge shopping mall with Chuck E. Cheese in the lot. Nope, not going to that mall. Looks like I'm driving to the one next state over. Story 3. Okay, not Chuck E. Cheese for the record. But I haven't had a chance to share these stories from a particular family-themed slash children's channel-themed hotel. Crap in the middle of the walkway entrance and no one noticing for about 20 minutes. Had a customer come tell me and I had to look at it to believe it. Saw two different families fight over a game of air hockey and the dads were throwing punches at each other, while the kids were just yelling at them to stop. Trying to explain to a guest that the reason why their disc for their PS2 wasn't working was because their child scratched the crap out of it. Of course, the parent refused to believe that that was the case and their child would never do something like that. Had a child tell me his father dropped him off here so he could drink at the bar. He just wanted to play with his dad. I played skee-ball with him and rigged the claw game to get him whatever he wanted from it. That last one is definitely a bit sad. Actually, the one about the dads fighting is also kind of sad. The optimistic part of me wants to be like, yeah, they were fighting for their children, they, they thought they were doing the right thing, but also, eh, I'm not 100% sold on that. Story 4. Worked at Chuck E. Cheese when I was in high school. Here are a couple things that happened when I was there. 1. The longer a pizza sat in the window waiting for table delivery, the fewer toppings it had when it got to the table. 2. The costume room was the only place without security cameras. It became a banging den for frisky high school kids. 3. A Chuck E. Cheese frisky tape was filmed in said banging den. The four participants wearing nothing but the costume heads. 4. On nights when we threw out the raw pizza dough, we would have pizza dough fights after we closed. A ball of raw dough to the gut hurts like hell. Story 4. It was my night off and I was waiting for my friend to get off her shift. One of the older guys that worked there came in for his shift tripping on acid. It was okay for a little while until he had to get in the Chucky suit. He started throwing candy at an entire party. That was probably the craziest. Story 6. I worked at a place very similar to Chuck E. Cheese. We had a bunch of stuff happen. A gun was left in the toddler area. Some people were caught doing hard drugs at the back of the store. People constantly dropped their kids off at the beginning of the day and used us as daycare centers. We had go-karts and people often threatened us physically because their children weren't tall enough to ride. The list goes on. Story 7. Didn't work there, but I went there a few times as a child. I was five years old and was at a classmate's birthday party. I was just getting over being sick, so I was happy to be able to be at a fine establishment like Chuck E. Cheese. I eat pizza and have a good time with my friends. At the end of the night, when we're rounded up by our parents, two other kids and I are still running around. I'm chasing a friend and I stop to catch my breath and I cough. But I don't need to cough, I need to throw up. I do. Then I wipe the sick off my jacket and continue to chase my friend. I get sick as I'm running. Just a wild, crazy trail of throw up everywhere. My dad ends up getting a hold of me and takes me to clean up in the restroom. When we go back out to ground zero, it's just a mess. And there is one lonely employee with a broom and sawdust. 
Oh my god, is all he could say at the mess I had made. Poor guy, I would have quit after that. Story 8. I have novels worth of stories working there. The most memorable, however, were 1. Kid losing an eye. 2. Two co-workers banging in the basement. 3. All-out fistfight between my manager and a customer on my last day. Edit. Story time for those who asked. This is more or less an abridged version. Towards the end of the night, parents decide they're going to leave the building without their kids, which is against store policy. Kids try to leave the building. My manager stops them. The mom comes into the building and starts cursing out my manager. A woman in her posse splashes soda in my manager's face and mom starts pounding on her, my manager. Next thing you know, they're duking it out MMA style while everyone is watching. Needless to say, cops were called and mom was escorted from the premises. Best last day ever. Story 9. The one I worked at was apparently the best run one in the area so we had people coming in from up to two hours away. We were always over capacity and understaffed. 1. Kid crapped on the slide. Someone had to climb the slide to clean it while other kids up top kept trying to come down. 2. Don't let your kids run around barefoot. Every inch of carpet has been covered in every bodily fluid known to man and probably some unknown. Look at any kid wearing white socks. See how dirty they are? Those carpets are vacuumed every night, but only washed on Christmas Day. 3. I did kid check a lot because I was good at faking cheerfulness. Three separate occasions where parents tried to beat me with their strollers, kids inside, for asking to see their stamps. 4. Eid. Frickin' Eid. Worst manager was on duty, sent home everyone so we only had a skeleton crew. One kitchen, one GR, one cash, no kid check or showroom. He didn't stop people coming in when we hit capacity. It became as densely packed as a mosh pit. People were overflowing into the kitchen. Everyone was mad because we couldn't even get out to serve food. These three kids were camping the salad bar and just shoveling into the hard-boiled eggs. They'd eat up the entire pot immediately. I got stuck in the back prepping salad bar. I couldn't keep up with the egg demand. Entire stock, week's worth, was gone in an hour. Kids clogged the soda fountain drain and used token cups, fingers plugging the holes, to drink the overflowing swill. Don't know what happened after, because I was also sent home and booked off every Eid after that. 5. Just assume all your worst nightmares about the kitchen are true. The mozzarella sticks, wings, and fries are straight to the oven from the freezer. They are the safest things to eat. We used to paint finished pizzas with fake garlic butter. I think it was canola oil mixed with salt and MSG. Just a giant vat of that with a big glorp sloshed all over the pizza. It changed about three years ago, I think. 6. I was never supposed to be in Chucky. I'm too short. But once we were short-staffed, had three birthdays, whatever, I got in Chucky for the show. Kid grabbed the nose and climbed me. I was supporting an eight-year-old's weight with my neck. 7. Cops called every day. Birthdays make people violent and insane. Once, two birthday moms were fighting and one stole the knife from our kitchen, threatened the other mom, had it confiscated, then went back for the knife and repeated it. They were fighting over a single chair. There were dozens of empty chairs five feet away. 8. Birthday with 75 adults, 50 kids. Started at 8.30 p.m., ended at 1.30 a.m. We close at 11. Every game was displaced. Tables were flipped in the showroom. Showroom and game room 3 were 100% covered in neon pink something. GR guy licked it, it was frosting. Had to clean 125 people's worth of frosting off two areas. The men were also constantly stealing from behind the counter, but the manager was cool with it because of how much the party was bringing in. The birthday girl? Two years old. Nine. Was doing merch. Ticket slash prize counter. No calculators, so I was running four separate guests' accounts mentally. One guest was furious that I took longer than 0.5 seconds to deal with her constantly changing her mind, and began berating me for being slow. And she said in her day they kept people like me out of polite company, etc. Luckily, my manager was beside me and ripped into her. 10. Women's bathroom always looked like a diaper, pad, and toilet paper nuke went off in it. But whatever, they're easy enough to pick up. Men's room always had crap and one inch of pee on the floor. Men's room had crap writing, crap footprints, yes, foot, not shoe, and more fun stuff. Diapers stuffed in weird gaps in the pipes where they couldn't be removed without tearing them open. Women's room, always bad, but predictably so. Men's room, either great or awful, and always a special kind of awful. Most of the stories are just too stupid to live customers, though. Honestly, you stop hearing the screaming in games by your second hour into a shift. Everything they say about the salad bar is true. OP just came in here with an entire thread of their own, huh? Really held nothing back. Honestly, all the fighting in Chuck E. Cheese? Not something I expected, but it seems to be a common thread. Story 10. My dad used to manage Chuck E. Cheese when I was a kid. 
My sister and I would stay late on the weekends after close and when they took off the suits of the animatronics for cleaning. And there was a time we were playing in the showroom, and one of the employees thought it would be funny to turn everything on. So they burst to life. All raw robot parts and furless, bulging eyes and bared teeth. Terrifying. It sent two seven-year-olds running. Recently, I couldn't even play Five Nights at Freddy's due to deep-rooted trauma from unexpected robot action. No thank you. I'll take it OP did not go to see the movie then. I have also not seen it. If you have, compare it to these stories. Was the movie scarier or were the stories scarier? I would bet these stories. I don't know if the movie's even a horror movie. Story 11. I worked there for a few months before getting a better job at a private school daycare. Honestly, the kids really didn't bother me all that much. The co-workers were awful. No one cared about their job and everyone was overworked. I legitimately wanted to make kids' birthday parties super fun and give them attention and joke around with them. But instead, I had to be running to the back to clean up the salad bar, run pizzas to other tables, let someone know that they needed to fix a game, etc. I understand multitasking, but they either needed to prioritize giving attention to the birthday parties or taking care of all the other stuff. Because it's next to impossible to do both, especially when you work two birthday parties simultaneously. The worst, though, was that one of the managers apparently stole money and tried to pin it on me. I was new. I didn't know I was supposed to count the register by myself. He told me he was supposed to do it. He stole money from it, and when the other managers confronted him, he acted like he had no idea where the money was, but it must be the new girl. Fortunately, they didn't believe him. It was a pattern for him, and he was fired. He did not go easily. They had security watch out for him for a couple of days because he tried to vandalize the place and stuff. What do you mean, vandalize the place and stuff? Dude got fired from a Chuck E. Cheese and he held a vendetta? And not even fired for a garbage reason. He got fired for stealing and then decides to have a problem with the Chuck E. Cheese, whatever. People just are so dumb. Story 12. Worked during high school as a game tech slash guy who cleans up after crappy customers at a Chuck E. Cheese in Mississippi. Got a couple of good ones to share. First week on the job working without someone watching me, I had to physically get in between a young guy and an elderly black lady while they were fighting. Lady stole three tickets from dude's daughter and threw them in this girl's face when I told her to return them. I'm a small guy and my GM thought it was hilarious when I told him. Definitely not something I was expecting to do. I caught my technical manager, guy who works on games and nothing else, sleeping under the basketball games at least once a week. But he liked me and said that I was smarter than anyone else in the store, so I never reported him for it. He also decided that he wanted to personally train me to replace him as the tech manager, but I wouldn't let him since I was about to quit for college. He still decided that he was going to train me anyway because he liked the way I worked. Thanks, Ron. You're a cool guy. Got scheduled to run and close the kitchen one night. I had never done it, let alone worked in the kitchen at all. That night was the worst. I had to stay an extra two hours after normal close to finish all that stuff by myself. Had an assistant manager complain to me one weeknight when the store was completely empty for talking to a coworker after I finished all my work before I clocked out. Almost quit that night, but there was a lot that led up to it that added to my anger. Had to clean the entirety of the sky tubes when I had an ingrown toenail. A kid had gotten scared, peed herself, and then climbed all through the tubes and got it everywhere. Took nearly two hours to finish. Had an overweight woman cuss me out when I told her she was too large to ride a kid's ride. That one was more funny than anything. Having people eat all but one wing on the buffalo wing tray. That goes through the industrial oven twice, and saying that they were undercooked. They come pre-cooked. We mainly just thaw and reheat them. People trying to leave their kids while they shop. Other people getting angry when we had to go on a wait and cussing me or the girl working at Kid Shack. I had to deal with a lot of angry rednecks who couldn't win the children's games. Or that had put a token into a jammed game and decided to put 15 more in just to make sure it didn't work. And then got madder when I wasn't allowed to give them the tokens that I took out of the jammed game back. I was taking a quick break in the bathroom one day and a little kid runs into the bathroom and jiggles the stall door and I say, it's taken. So he gets down on his hands and knees and climbs under the door and into the stall with me. I'm like, get out of here, kid! And he just stares at me until his mom comes and yells for him to get out. Now, for the worst. The Chucky suit. For the record, I was in it a lot, and all the other employees said I was the best at it, so I did nearly every party and show that came on while I was working. I never minded because it gave me a chance to be goofy, until I had to get in it six times in a row a couple of times. The show comes on two times an hour, plus whenever parties may be during that time. One of my first times, I had a young teenage girl, 13 to 14, try to seduce me while I was in the suit. She followed me around in and out of the suit. Got groped on the crotch and butt on several occasions. Can't say or do anything because you have to stay in character. Had a grown man grab my arm through the cracked door to the Chucky room and try to follow me while tickling me. That was pretty freaky because that room is pretty much soundproofed. 
I slammed the door on his face, though. Had a kid sprint across the floor and punch me so hard that the mask got knocked sideways like in the movies. This hurts so much because it rips the Velcro and inner helmet around your face. During a busy hour, I did the show and got tackled by about 30 kids. And when the mask hit the floor, it jumped into my mouth and a sharp piece of plastic sliced the piece of flesh that connects my gums and lip completely in half. I bled all over the inside of the mask. Didn't even finish the dance, just ran into the back room. My favorite is when a toddler, probably no older than two, followed me around the store yelling, Chucky is a stupid female dog! for about 10 minutes. I was laughing so hard inside the suit I couldn't see straight. Then he started to kick my shins. The suit could suck, but it didn't have to if you made it fun. But I have to say that the worst thing about working there is that I was there for a year and a half and never got more than 18 hours a week or any type of promotion, despite knowing how to fix almost every problem that happened to any game on the floor, and having special training from the tech manager. Some crap about having too many black shirts in the store. I was a red shirt, starting position. But when one would leave, that slot would get filled by someone that had started working after I did. I hated that place so much, but I needed the money, so I stayed until I had to leave for school. I can't believe the mental fortitude of OP. The piece of flesh that connects the gums and lip cut in half, and you're still like, the suit wasn't that bad. I would not step foot in a Chuck E. Cheese ever again. Not that I have in the first place, admittedly. But I wouldn't if that had happened to me. I would never go back to wherever that happened. That sounds like some cursed stuff. I hate that. Story 13. I can tell a couple quick and dirty stories after working there for three years, which was basically my first job. I worked in the kitchen as the crew leader, but we were such a close group of employees that nothing there was secret. There was a running joke about the cashier curse because so many of our female cashiers got pregnant. One time, a stripper got hired for the showroom, and she told me that the manager used to sneak her and her dancer friends in after hours for private shows. There was an assistant manager who got fired right before I was hired. He was known to take money out of the safe, buy a bunch of drugs, flip them, and then return the money to the safe later that night. Of all the stores in our shopping center, we have by far the most cash on hand at any given time, yet we were never robbed. Literally every other store in the shopping center had been robbed except for us, including a bank. Though, we did have a gang fight. I was in the kitchen cleaning up and three guys violently spilled into the kitchen rolling around on the ground throwing blows. We had an employee who was trying to leave the gang life behind and rivals had recognized his tattoos and decided to jump him. Luckily, the customer who started the fight didn't use the knife cops found on him when they showed up. Older kids would beat on the costumed characters all the time. I don't know what it is about those costumes that made little kids, the evil ones anyway, want to hit them. One time, the girl that was in the chuck suit came running into the kitchen crying after someone had slammed her on her back hard enough to leave a bruise. Little kids pee and crap in the ball pit all the time. When this happened, the poor sap who was running the game room would have to gather up all the balls, take them back, and hose them all down. This happened at least once a month. Once when working the ticket price counter, a father threatened to break my frickin' neck because he thought I was rude to his son. Another time, I watched a man backhand his 16-year-old daughter for an unknown reason. I did not speak their language, so I don't know what she did to get smacked. A game room employee almost got hit by a parent who was not happy about the employee stopping their delinquent child from running up and down the skee ball lane. One time, a large arcade slash miniature golf place opened up and we found out that our tokens work in their games. A friend of mine who worked there said that while they were sorting tokens, the manager wondered aloud, Where the hell are these Chuck E. Cheese tokens coming from? When we got hungry, sometimes a pizza would accidentally get all messed up and therefore couldn't get served to the customer. Oh, darn. I guess we'll have to eat that one. I can safely say that in the three years I worked in the kitchen, I made sure no one messed with anybody's food. That just wasn't cool in my opinion. A gang fight in Chuck E. Cheese, huh? But never a robbery, that's interesting. The fact that they had the most cash on hand at any given time makes sense to me. Now, if I'm ever gonna rob somewhere, I would know where. FBI agent, for you listening, that's a joke. I have no intentions of robbing anything, let alone a Chuck E. Cheese. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed these absolutely wild rides of stories from Chuck E. Cheese. And I hope you have a wonderful day or night wherever you are, and I will see you in the next one.